This is a Main Hustle Media Podcast. Main Hustle Media Podcasts are recorded on the ancestral lands of the Chumash, Tongva, Karankwa, and Hohokam people. And I wish to pay my respects to the people of those nations, both past and present. <laughs> hey, y'all. Welcome to Queer and Far, a travel podcast from a couple of queer femmes. I am one of your co-hosts, Charmaine Fury, a.k.a. The Blasian Blurred, the busiest mixed race, by gender bisexual, polyamorous, atheist, comic book nerd, cat mom, and two-time Asian American Podcasters Association's Golden Crane Award winning podcaster in this podcasting game. And I am joined by my friend and co-host, Shane Anigans. Hey, I'm a noob. That's it. I'm no- <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yes. I'm new to uh, the podcasting world, but uh, old school gamer ran an online gaming community for 13 years, overall nerd. And I'm happy to be here with my friend Charmaine. We have been talking about doing a project of some sort together for a really long time. And we've known each other. We just realized we've known each other for 20 years, like literally right before we hit record we realized yeah. this we, we did math <laughs> we did math we did and math. honestly for the last i want to say three or four years we have been talking about potentially leaving the country mm-hmm. together ish yes in community i guess in some yes. way shape or form uh for a while and now that the world is melting literally <laughs> and literally. physically on fire on fire and politically, uh, right. we're getting a little bit closer to that decision. And mm-hmm. so we decided we would get together mm-hmm. to start a podcast since I'm already a podcaster mm-hmm. uh, to talk about travel, to document whatever this upcoming expat possible journey might look like. And also, we tend to be fairly political folks. We're deeply entrenched in our various intersections. And we want to focus our effort and the content we create um, into being a resource for queer folks, black and brown folks, queer folks and disabled folks and all the other things in between. And we're going to pair up to do this together. We're coming at you with different strengths and different knowledge bases. um, And then we're just friends. So that's the vibes. That's the vibes. Yeah. We met in college. We did. And, uh, I followed you around. A Go lot. banana slugs. Oh, banana slugs. That's a UC like this. Santa Cruz. Remember? Like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little, little slug with arms crossed. Yes, excellent. Yeah. We were feared in the um, never. We were never. Yeah, feared. we had an ultimate frisbee <laughs> team I, and not a football team. We had a basketball. We had, we a had basketball, basketball. But I never saw them play. We also had volleyball, and I did see them play, and I caught a t shirt. Did I go to that with you? Who no. did we go to that with? So our, uh, one of our claim to fame is we had, um, when MTV was doing those uh, um, TV shows where they were following, um, what are those, sororities and fraternities? Mm. We only had one fraternity on <laughs> campus. Did we? I didn't even know. Yeah. yeah, we had one. And our claim to fame was the producers because they found them boring hilarious right right? um told them that what they should do as a gag is to go to one of the schools and steal a koi fish and eat it it. oh those were the kids that got arrested (laughs) that was in my college okay so so uc santa cruz was broken up in multiple colleges and i went to i was at porter that's where i lived that's that's where the film school and stuff like that was based out of and we had a koi pond that had two koi and they yep. got charged, from what I understand, yep. they went to jail for it, but they got charged like $17,000 per. That was an expensive fish. <laughs> it was an expensive fucking fish. And they'd been there for like 18, 20, 20 years. Yeah, 20 years. I was, I yes. Actually, you ate so that's what pet. that was? I thought yeah. those were just randos. I didn't realize that was an MTV thing. Mm-hmm. Wow. Of course, I, MTV was like, oh, wait, we didn't make we didn't you do, do it. it. <laughs> Seriously, I just told that story like two weeks ago to somebody. I was like, uh, we were around a koi pond and I was like, and you know. <laughs> and you know. <laughs> Interesting story about koi. 
Um, so yeah, we've known each other for a long time. Mm-hmm. I still, honestly, I don't remember when we met. I just remember I. your general intensity. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I, I feel like I feel like I should apologize. Uh, You're fine. <laughs> I mean, we managed to get this far, we, so. I was really intense. I was a very huggy person. You were super huggy. And I am Charmaine the opposite is not. of huggy. I am a black, Japanese, British American. Right. I was raised by a British grandmother and a Japanese grandmother. Not a whole lot of affection. A, and, uh, and generally, I, do, I don't like to be touched. <laughs> and then you didn't, you weren't, you weren't, you didn't grow up with a lot of like, white people in your neighborhood i didn't or, grow up with any white people yeah like and then I mean, all of a sudden i grew up with me. literally my british grandmother was like the only white person i knew most of my life and then there was me just intense just suddenly, white girl just like we're gonna just, be friends we're gonna be friends too. let's be friends <laughs> let's be friends and for some odd reason you let me stay around i still question it i mean <laughs> i i never disliked you <laughs> That's Santa. not a ringing endorsement, but <laughs> fair. Well, you were, I mean, yes, I, I will. I've said it for many years, so it's not like I'm talking out of turns. You were intense and you yes. were a lot for yes. me. Um, mm -hmm. And by then, it's not like I hadn't been around white people. I, I had. I left I left Long Beach in, when I was 15 and I moved to a whitish neighborhood, mostly uh, military family. So a lot of mixed folks, a lot of diverse groups of people but predominantly white folks so it's not like i'm like was totally unaware of white people by the time i met you it's just that you were super intense and also i couldn't fit you know what it was i couldn't figure out why you liked me that's what it was because i will not I, I this is gonna sound a, this is a terrible thing i'm about to say i've said something for, like this before but this is true okay I'm ready. i have a personality that people don't want to be friends with but they fan over like I get oh. fans. Okay, yeah. And I always have, it's very strange because once I actually need like a friend, like confide in mm -hmm. emotion or whatever, mm -hmm. usually mm -hmm. those people bounce. But you were like a fan friend. Yep. That just like, we just hit it off and, yep. and that was I, it. I liked you because you were genuine. I, I uh, it was very rare in my life and it's still rare uh, even today that uh, someone says what they mean and me with. In fact, I am learning the hard lesson now of being 40 something. <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, realizing that a lot of the people have good intentions around me, mm. uh, but they fake it till they make it. Right. And that's not healthy. That's fair. I mean, so. I, yeah, I have always been a do what I mean, do what I say, say what I mean type of person. I, I grew up with, uh, I have a, I come from a long line of, of, liars con men cheaters dicks <laughs> um and i just couldn't i can't be that way like i i i would rather lose somebody with the truth than right keep them with the lie so um yeah maybe maybe that's what it, well maybe that's also why i don't maintain like deep deep friendships deep friendships or the friendships i have are all these 20 plus year friendships because they've known me ever since they've always you know my co-host on Blurred Comics, we've known each other for 36 or something like that years. We've known each other forever. I think to be fair to tell everybody in the um, outside internet world, sorry. Um, <laughs> the interwebs. It, the interwebs. Um, oh, was it Beyonce's internet? Uh, that um, even though we've known each other for 20 something years, we did lose touch after we did. graduation. Yeah. Not like, you know, we just, you know, you wander away. Also, the internet wasn't what it is now. Right. You could literally stay in touch all the time. Like I, the first time I touched the internet was when I was 18 years old on New Year's Eve. Um, I was a senior in high school. And then I didn't touch it again for two more years. Yeah. My first two years of college, I was writing papers on typewriter. So yeah. when we, we graduated mm -hmm. in 2003 from college, Friendster existed. Yes. I don't think Facebook did yet. No, but it's MySpace. MySpace started to pop up. So I think I got into MySpace because I was doing all that HTML. Uh, <laughs> like, yes. Coding thing on MySpace for a page. But like you didn't like, like, yeah, like it wasn't just like you had access to people. No. When we finally gained back contact, I was living in Massachusetts by then. Mm -hmm. That was 2013. Yep. When and I 
And it really was just like, I sent out a blast email because I was fundraising for a film I was making. And I just had your email address in there and you happened to respond. Like, I didn't even know if you would have even had that email. I was so excited when I heard that you were not only the, here from you, but that you were making a movie. And I remember like, I have some money here. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So it was cool. I mean, it was cool to reconnect. And, but at that point, I mean, yeah, like 10 years went by and yeah. And we didn't know each other all that time. Um, but we, you know, we grew up like I grew up in both Northern and Southern California. You grew up in Northern California. We yeah. both went to the same college. We had some similar interests. We we're both in the film program. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, whatever. It worked out and we ended up staying friends. So since 2013, though, we've been mm -hmm. fairly steadily in contact friends. Right. And then we physically have seen each other two times two, two, only two times yeah. all based off of me moving across country so once when i Twice. moved yeah once when i moved. oh no no once was for my move once was when i flew into the state that you live in yeah um to because my play niece was graduating high school so that's why i was there the second time i was moving from california to texas which is where i'm currently living mm -hmm. um and i passed through so i got to see you then too but mm -hmm. since then like we talked weekly like a lot yeah. a lot yeah more than weekly i guess yeah about yeah. various subjects various and we subjects. and it is true we have been talking about trying to do um a, a pot you know a pot, or something a project a project and then how this all came about is um you know as we were going on our little conversations of talking about leaving the united states for various reasons mm -hmm. um we, when we were gathering uh intel from my perspective, because <laughs> I'm still deep into my decolonization work and I will never be done, mm. is realizing that most of the information that I was gathering from came from the white perspective. Right. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm getting the, the true scope of what really is out there and sure. what really could happen to you. And so it when we and I, we, we and I. It works. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> That was our goal is that we wanted to focus on, you know, the marginalized groups perspective of whoever, if they were creating their own Airbnbs or their own businesses or mm -hmm. um, how to travel safely because everybody has their own way and, um, and the things that they look for, whether that, you know, you're trans, you look from a different perspective. If you're mm -hmm. black, you look from another perspective, you're female or present as female, you have to think of it from another perspective. So I'm really interested in and in, of gathering more intel and helping people who are from those groups. Um, Cause when I do talk to them, they're like, I want to travel, but I don't feel safe. To right. Travel. And a lot of some of the reason why we continue to have those conversations together, I think had a lot to do with me as a Brown queer femme presenting mm -hmm. person to say like, Oh wait, no, you know, you, you might, you might've described something and I'd be like, well, wait, <laughs> because mm -hmm. Brown, Brown, family Brown pairing here. Um, and, and there are things that we've talked about over the years. Some of them are exposing things in which you'll say something and it'll be, it'll be clearly from your perspective while also doing the decolonization work that you're doing. And then I chime in with, okay, for me, this is my deal with my intersections and that ends, ends up expanding. And then you have a tendency to pause the conversation and say, okay, let me go do some work on this mm -hmm. and then I'll come back and we'll talk about it later. So mm -hmm. the reason why sir auntie mixed Maine, <laughs> who does all these podcasts that have to do with blackness or mixed blackness or mixedness in general, how I end up engaging in relationship further with you, I guess really had so much to do with the fact that, you're the only white person that I know that says, let me pause here and let me go do some labor and then I'll come back and we can talk about it when you have the spoons. Mm -hmm. So for years, I referred to you as my white woman whisperer because one, you would tag in when I had issues with white folks and you'd be like, who do I, who do I need to sick? Where? And you, you would go do, you would kind of jump into that. Um, as we continued on more in our friendship while you were doing more of your decolonization work and, and you have like, you've, you've gone, you've done from where I was going, I don't want to do this with you, you know, like early on to where you're at now, where you're pausing it before we get into it. And you've actually even 
caught me a couple times when you're upset about something that I didn't get upset about yet. And then you say, it, and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like that TikTok. I was out, <laughs> I was out N word, and I will never be out N word again. Uh, there's a moments that you've caught, you've even like, I got excited about something that you were offered, and you were like, but I'm a, you know, white femme. I'm a white person. person. Why was I offered that? And I'm like, damn it, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Mia, here I am celebrating my friend, and white supremacy is at play. Uh, yeah. So I think. For years, I called you my white woman whisperer. Now, mm -hmm. because of TikTok, I call you my emotional support white woman. Um, I can love it. I, I, I want. I, I, we're gonna I, get t-shirts. We're, we're gonna get t-shirts. Get t-shirt. I promise. And on the um, back, it's gonna say, "Careful, she bites." <laughs> but I. So so yes, that's you are the person who I trust to do the work when work needs to be done. Thank you. You're one of the few people that I I see is doing decolonization work and following through like I'm actually seeing it. And the amount of times, like I said, that you now pause a conversation to get into, let me go do some work. And then when you come back, you're like, speaking of blah, 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 do you have the spoons to talk about this right now? Yeah. And then we get into it. So I would not engage in a project like this, even if I really wanted to do something like this, which I do, if I didn't feel like the white person that I'm doing this with, has some form of awareness and like you're gonna fuck up i'm yeah. gonna fuck up but we're gonna have conversations and right. we have already proven right. we can have conversations and um and get to a place where it's like okay work needs to be done and yep. and that's not in so solely on you either i mean well even as a brown fam i got i have i have work to be uh done in terms of things that are just so programmed and so deeply um indoctrinated that i have to do that work too so that is why I feel engaging in a project like this together is so strong because if we were two white femmes, mm. it would be a very different game. If we were two brown femmes, it would be a very different game. But because we come from different intersections, yep. mm -hmm. um, we can catch each other up on things and make things awareness like there's some things that you're aware of because of access to white privilege that mm. I do not have an awareness for that could be a safety issue for me right lacking that awareness and then there's things with me as a brown femme who grew up as a hood kid would just be like common sense number one would say you know like boom and you'd be like huh huh so I think the tag team uh, just the the whatever between us that we have will be um potentially really helpful to queer folks, to black and brown folks, to disabled folks as we're out there, because we do have we do have those intersections between us. Right. <clears throat> we have them differently, of course. The the thing that connects us in terms of similarity is that we are both femme presenting and that we are both queer identified. Queer. After that, there's a shit ton of shit there's we don't we don't cross over on. So no. it's, I think it's good that we will have these opportunities. I agree. I, I I agree, and I I think like um like for me on on a personal note for me is like I want to live by example because I need to believe, and I'm struggling because of the last yes you know, and you guys are now learning. Uh, the last couple of years have been really hard mentally. They've been hard on you. <laughs> yeah, I've been struggling with depression, and I'm not as loud and bubbly as I once was, and in college um i'm a lot more quiet so i this is a, a in I'm, college it was like attack her attack, now it's like I, I, attack attack <laughs> attack but i'm gonna like fist the cuffs with people um i don't have the confidence that i used to be but it's been an interesting I, I i've been known i'm queer forever i used to tell uh partners i've dated um different genders um and, um, but honestly, this is, this year was the first year I said happy pride for myself. Yeah. This is the first time I am putting myself in a, a situation, in a situation where like, no, that's mine too. Yeah. As opposed to continuing to give it to other people or uplifting other people. Um, I'd like to not diminish myself. So I'm hoping yeah. that this experience for me is discovering who I am after all of this. And, um, but living by example, because I want other white femmes in particular, I need you guys to do this work because <laughs> yeah. if not, we are so effed. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, but that's, yeah, little side, little, little personal. Note. No, I'm glad you said that because that, that is something that is very specific to, well, 
to you because yes. you're the only because you're the only oh. white white emotional support white woman that I have yeah. in my life. Um, because you are an elevator. I'm also an elevator. Like in terms of activism and stuff like that, I'm not a boots on the ground mm -hmm. marcher or anything like that. But I am an elevator cause. Use my platforms. Mm -hmm. um, da, da 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 da. Find ways to raise money. Like yeah. I I do stuff like that. But you will elevate at your expense. Yes. And I don't know. I probably do a version of that, but it's slightly different for me as a brown. You know, whereas you, um, you like, when we had this conversation about it, it was almost like, yeah, I know I'm queer, but it's not that big of a deal kind yeah. of a thing. As if it wasn't influencing the stuff that you were actually doing. So mm -hmm. I think it's important for you um, to own yourself. So, so much as you are comfortable in doing it publicly, um, you know, own that aspect of you so that you're not just like um, straight assumed white woman here. I'm going to get in here and try to help you guys out. You know, like, I think that's important that, you know, you have some skin in the game. Yes. It's different than what I have. It's different than the people that I know have and stuff like that. It's very specific to you. And so having that opportunity to own that will only make you better at the work that you're doing because you're now including yourself in it. So I, I hope that keeps up happening. And if not, I'll just yell at you and yes. make mm -hmm. it happen. And um, remind me that this process is supposed to be uncomfortable. That's how it's change uncomfortable. happens. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I do think you bear it well, even in your discomfort, what you need to start doing, which is what a lot of us who do work like this need to do is rest, mm -hmm. give ourselves some grace, take a break when, we, you know, it can't be, it needs to be a hundred percent of the time, but it can't be a hundred percent of the time. So Not you have all the to, time. you have to pause sometimes so that and you I can don't be pause. better. And you don't pause. I don't pause. So I'm hoping that through this process, and I don't either. I'm really good at telling people to pause. I don't pause. So hopefully <laughs> accountability partners as we are right. on this podcast venture that we're going to be doing together. Um, I will hold you accountable. You will hold me accountable. And yeah. we will try to nurture each other while also kicking the shit out of whatever demons it is that we are fighting in terms of um, allowing us our chance to be the best versions okay. that we that we can be right. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then I think also then, does that mean to, we are going to be traveling. Our goal is to leave the United States mm. perhaps permanently, but mm. we'd like this to dip our toes into other locations first. And we've been looking at Mexico is our mm -hmm. main one right now. Um, but who are you going to be? It's not just you traveling, right? You're, you're going to be bringing, uh, Cats, I believe, and yes, I'll be bringing and, cats and a a human boy, a human partner, <laughs> yes, a human a human male man. partner, a, a human male partner. Uh, yeah, so I, um, my world consists of my cis heterosexual male husband of mm -hmm. twenty two years. Um, we are polyamorous, so we also have to make sure that while we're looking for places to live, that we will look for places that won't throw us in jail mm -hmm. if we, quote unquote, commit adultery. Yep. Um, you know, we don't always have other partners, but um, I would say while I do identify as polyamorous, I, I think we're more in a monogamish situation and that we have been that that's the monogamish for those of you out there in the non-monogamy world or not yeah. out there in the non-monogamy world. Monogamish is basically that you are in a committed couple of some mm -hmm. sort, um, but that you allow each other access, um, you know, sexual access to other partners that may or may not ever have emotional attachments. That's kind of more what it's been recently. Although we both identify as polyamorous, we both have loved other people in the past, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yes, I'm, I'm carting, I'm carting him along. I am also carting four cats along with me. So four. I need to I know. know four. Yeah. Oh, well, Lord. two of them are senior citizens and yes. two of them are, um, I guess, middle-aged or whatever. Uh, but I still think of them as the kittens. So yeah, so that'll be a challenge to to find a place and to actually afford the transport and hopefully yes. not put them at physical and and health harm mm -hmm. in doing a transition like this. Um, and you are traveling with a white cis <laughs> autistic 
Uh, what happened? Did something? Okay. Uh, Pause. <laughs> is, it a, is it a bug smash it? Yeah, yeah sorry. I, just, I live in Texas and it scares the shit out of me. In the great words of Eartha Kitt, smash it with a hammer! I only had a phone next to me and I tried to Don't hit it with the Don't do phone. that. that it was just a natural reaction. Um, Goki Boris, a.k.a. La Cucarachas. I, I live in Texas and one, two just walked up on me. So I was trying not to react to them. I'm going to leave it in, though. <laughs> hey, you know, because that's going to be some interesting outtakes. If That'll we be one traveling. of the things that we actually talk about, too, is bugs. Yeah. Bugs. <laughs> bugs i can handle certain types of bugs but there are certain types you will hear me scream like a full-on little girl uh, yeah i mean the way i react to them now is from like living the, in i i thought that was healthy that i would have not handled that well i would have been out the room i've lived so. in texas on and off in my life this is my third time living here in texas i'm desensitized to them enough to be like ugh, but not like ah so Although when they fall on me in the shower or something like that, that I will lose my mind. I promise. So sorry. Let's take it back. Okay, you well, are I'm traveling. Oh, I'm, travel <laughs> I'm traveling with a uh, with a uh, white cis hetero um, autistic man. Oh, I forgot to mention my my human person is a uh, a half a big a half Palestinian half white. 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 Man. And it, not my norm. Like <laughs> when, I, when I was dating and then I, uh, when he showed up, I'm like, what? why you, <laughs> why yeah. you? And also in the military, that is an absolute, was an absolute. No it's a pretty shot. When, uh, when I found out of who you ended up marrying, I was really <laughs> surprised because we hadn't seen each other in so long. I was really surprised. You did know yeah. Tristan because I was already with him. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what happens when you fall in love with your high school high best school. friend. Right at 22 years old. So by the mm -hmm. time I met you, I was already locked in. <laughs> and then, uh, so, and then I'm also traveling with three dogs, one mm. Chihuahua and one full pit bull and one dope. Oh, mm -hmm. which the adds full pit bull for, yeah, yeah, that's an element of travel. It's an element of travel difficulty that I am learning the hardships on because the UK, it's a banned animal um, or the EU. Yeah. AU. Anyway, um, there's so many places, yeah, that they that they are being banned. So I have to work around. And he's like the dopiest, easygoing. All of them are. They're only bullies when you train them terribly. Like, badly. They're the gentle. They literally were used as nursery dogs. Yes. For the British aristocracy. Yep. I don't yeah. understand how this has become a thing. But carry on. Uh, well, <clears throat> racism. <laughs> Because what primarily what pit bulls are known for is, yeah. Anyway, um, we'll get into it. Now. We'll get into that. And then I had Jack, who is a I don't, I, I'm going to call him a boxer mix, and the and he's really fun loving, and he's but he's so talkative. I know everyone's like, what's wrong with him? Because he's like black, black, black. That's how he barks. <laughs> he doesn't bark. He black blats. <laughs> No, <laughs> boxers make weird sound. Like boxers don't have a regular bark. Yeah, and he strange. doesn't do a regular walk. It's a. That's funny. He's gangly. He's gangly, That's and really like I, I was watching videos on how dogs need to go through like the airports and stuff, and I was like, "Yikes!" <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> I mean, you're like, "Can you straight dog? Can you straight yeah, yeah, uh, I don't know. a dog?" I don't um, know because he's gonna be want to try to greet everyone. everybody. You're gonna have and to like dope him it. up enough that he still can walk, but, kill walk, but not be goofy. Right. Yeah. So that's no, what yeah. I'm so th those are some of the challenges that we're starting out with. Um, and then on top of it, with all the craziness that's been happening politically in the country that we currently reside yeah. in, um, there are a lot of other people that are planning on leaving the country. Yep. We are not jumping on that bandwagon. No. We are been talking about this for years. Right. For what, years, I've been yeah. saving up for five years. Yeah. Even though I've been talking about it for 10. For a long time, yeah. My, my partner and I, we literally, uh, several years ago, like, that's it. We're so getting done with America. We're yeah. going to start saving up money now. Yeah. And it's only getting, and in it, you're right, it is getting worse. And some of the other people that I, in our sphere, or in my sphere at least, that want help to get out are, I have, my best friends are trans. 
And I also have a gay, um, my, my other bestie is a gay black man. And I, yeah, we all want to go and so I have to help them get out. We're so. sort of, um, in what we talked about a couple years ago before things, uh, what put the bricks on for me is that I ended up opening a comic book shop here in Houston, which is why mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here. And that kind of slowed down my role. Um, otherwise we probably would have left a while ago. Um, oh, and then there's a whole pandemic. So forget oh, about yeah, that. that. that um, uh, so that slowed everything down, but now we're back into, into making the commitment to try to be gone. Um, hopefully, by the end Sometimes. of 2022 or beginning of 2023, if possible, possible, um, if possible. Uh, so that, that has also added some difficulty in this transition because the more people that are trying to flee the United States, the more countries are starting to lock things down. Mm -hmm. So we are balancing between the old research that shenanigans has been doing for ages and the new research that we're both trying to do together yeah. Uh, for this, for the sake of this podcast, we have different, like I said earlier, we have different strengths and different talents. I, being a podcaster, established podcaster for the last four or five years, um, I will be handling most of like the tech related things um, for, for the podcast, the logistics of the podcast. And also I will be until such time as we actually move or even maybe after when we move, uh, I will be traveling. I mm -hmm. travel for my other shows. I have multiple com uh, comic cons that I will be either paneling at or appearing at. Yep. Uh, I have some podcasting conventions that I'm going to. And I generally just, I'm a nomadic type of person. I'm, mm -hmm. I grew up as a military kid. I, I want to leave where I'm at every four to five years. I've only been in Houston for a year and a month and I'm already ready to move on. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and it's, it has more to do with, I'm no longer at Excellent. the comic book shop and things yeah. like that. But, um, but yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for this next adventure. And I am about to be 45 in the, by the end of the year. And I want to not be here. <laughs> like I just, I grew up with an international family. My grandmothers are from other countries. I'm, my dad was born in Germany. My mom grew up living in like seven different countries growing up. I'm one of the few people in my family that didn't live abroad. So mm -hmm. my part of the journey has a lot to do with that. And I like to travel and things like that. I will be documenting mm -hmm. my travel for the sake of this show. And then we'll discuss kind of the things that we discover. So my goal while I travel is look for accessibility for disabled folks to look for safety for queer folks and brown folks um, in particular as a mixed black Asian but heavily black identified femme, right. mm -hmm. my lens and what I'm looking for is the treatment of black women predominantly, mm -hmm. because that will be a, a good telling as to whether or not we're generally safe is how black women are treated. Absolutely. And while I do fly under the radar for non-black people in terms of my appearance as a black femme, um, that is my identity. That is, that is what I am. I just happen to have taken a lot from the Asian side in terms of my looks or my phenotype. So um, that'll be the thing that I do the most. And you are a research and organization yes. fucking hound. <laughs> and, and finance, I think. And finance. I'm, I'm a firm believer that now I am more than ever. Um, I know you know this, but they don't know. So I, I firmly believe as things are progressing right now, that white women in particular should not be leading the charge. Uh, that we should be listening to black, brown, and indigenous uh, people, and that we should be um, uh, uplifting and 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 being the cheerleaders and the support team behind them to get the shit done. Because honestly, not going into all the nuance of of it, but we are not equipped to handle this fight. Uh, so we need to um, take the leadership from people who've been fighting longer. And, uh, and then, and there's nothing wrong with taking on, uh, the cheerleading support role. Cause that's also essential. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, so that, that's where that is. I run my own business right now. That's why this is, a. sometimes Charmaine is handling a lot more of the traveling aspects now because I run the business to fund <laughs> the, tra <laughs> the, the traveling. So, uh, so, uh, um, and, um, that's the, our agreement on how we wanted to do things. I, she, uh, I was like, I, I, how about you could be the face and then I could just be the money. And you're like, I was no, like, we're tag teaming this thing. I'm like, okay. Our presence, I think. And I, I legitimately think this, I think our presence 
and our visibility in this particular instance could be helpful because while we are gaining resources that can hopefully be helpful to, to queer folks, to black yeah. and brown folks and to disabled folks as separate, you know, identity, yeah. um, forget about like whatever possible combo intersections there are. Mm. I think seeing the two of us experience those different things together, especially once we are closer together and part of our mission sort of accidentally became why don't we just do this together since we've yes. already had plans to we've already desired we have the separate desire to move abroad why not move abroad with someone that you already love and trust yeah. and um you know we're not gonna live in the same house but we'll Probably be relatively <laughs> close i mean if we are i mean change our we are but we'll, we'll see what happens um but like it'll you know it'll offer us a, a opportunity to be supportive of each other in a way that could actually make things a lot more helpful as we're building whatever ends up being this future plan of legitimately yeah. being a resource for yeah. other people to travel. And quite frankly, some people might be more comfortable talking to me and right. some people might be more comfortable talking to you. And I might be more comfortable talking to a certain set of people and you right. might be more comfortable talking. to. So I think like the fact that we are different from each right. other yes. is a benefit. And, right. um, and it's not just because, uh, you know, like I said, having the different skill sets, I think, is important because the mm -hmm. problem when you enter into any kind of business thing, when you have the exact same skill sets is dividing up the labor. And in this mm -hmm. case, we have like a clear way to divide the labor that that is helpful. There's some crossover, but not so much that we can't, you know, we will have to keep each other accountable to do this. And I think that'll be right. good for us. Yes. Um, but then also um, there's different aspects of this that we can make the other one realize a dream. In my case, you're assisting me in realizing a dream of this, you know, travel life that I never really had the confidence to try to pull off myself. Yes. And in my way, I am like once we're physically together and if we're running whatever this business type of thing ends up being for us, you know, I'm I'm an operations logistics person. I just need to get mm -hmm. in there. So there are ways in which we can be supporting each other that I think will be really beneficial. And I don't want to just be the face because I don't want to hide from the fact that there is the kind of support here is coming from you. Right. I think Thank that's you. important. But you I mean, say about that, <laughs> I do, I know I do feel about, say about that because I also know how important it is for us to do the work in the lanes that we can do the work in. Yes. And, uh, you know, and also there will be times that me being a white presenting femme, straight femme mm -hmm. will be useful. And there will straight be straight assumed. Straight assumed. Thank you very much. Look at you. Uh, look at you look diminishing at, at yourself again. Um, but also, you know, like the fact that I'm traveling with a white dude, mm. that will be useful in some cases as well. And vice versa. Um, because unfortunately, anti Asian, anti blackness is is everywhere. Present in other places, yeah. And, and I yeah. you know, I hope that I don't have to rely on that from you I think that's impossible for me to think I won't <laughs> you know like I think it is definitely a possibility um but I you know I I think ultimately the showing this example to others might be helpful and I mean a lot of people have the dynamic that you and I have I, I right I mean you know a friend uh, that's a different we're more, cur group. we're more colorful literally yeah we're literally super <laughs> but yeah um i just restored my natural hair color yesterday actually so it's nice and fresh this is my um, restorative color as well i'm a unicorn <laughs> so so i'm i'm happy to be doing this with you i'm Same. i'm glad that we found something between us that that was going to be the thing that worked and we've been talking about this for ages oh my god yes it really just started to crystallize like a couple months ago really truly I, and it all started actually guys it started off because i was doing research on how to help people get medical care outside of the united states because mm -hmm. i know so many people that are diabetic or other things but we'll just use diabetic for an example that pay twelve hundred dollars and that's cheap twelve hundred dollars mm -hmm. a month for for their insulin yeah and i could send them to mexico right now and they can come back with a couple months worth for $1,200, that includes the flight and food and staying yeah. for a week. Yeah. I used to work for a medical tourism company, too. And we used to make trips to go to different parts of Mexico for dental work, like 
you know, heavy at dental work and we'd get in a bus and, you know, we'd cart everybody down or multiple cars and we'd cart everybody down or, or we'd make arrangements connecting with doctors. Yep. So that is kind of an extension of what we're hoping to do is actually yes. create some sort of guide resource guides in the different places that we end up going um, and hopefully provide that resource. And, and also, because I think this is very important to both of us, we will tackle the discomforts of being Western, yes, light skin and or white skinned people mm -hmm. going into these places to benefit off of accessibility that we don't right. have here in the United States. Yeah. Um, those are going to be complicated feelings. We have had many a conversation <laughs> yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. partly that is one of the things is like, you know, we're having this uncomfortable conversation. We could be having this uncomfortable conversation yeah. where other people have access to it while yes. also trying to gain the resources that will be helpful in particular mm -hmm. with our uh, disabled trans intersectional friends mm -hmm. that we both yeah. have. Um, discovering ways to make things a little bit safer for them through the privileges that we have, yes. you know, able, you know, light or white yeah. <laughs> skin presenting things, stuff like that. So this is the kind of stuff we're going to be getting into. And this is how we are just kind of letting y'all know that we are starting out. Uh, we will be doing a bi-monthly podcast, probably until we actually physically do our move. Yeah. Um shenanigans is currently running a business i also have my podcasting business and i am doing four and a half weeks of travel coming up straight for different conventions and stuff like, stuff like that so uh we're gonna start out on a bi-monthly path we'll eventually kick on over probably to a weekly uh path whenever we get to where it is we're planning on landing we have a few options uh, that we're going to discuss with y'all too so come with us on this journey mm-hmm uh, feel free to jump in, ask questions and things, yeah. give us things that we can research because that will be, I mean, we already have. Or suggestions. Give us suggestions. Like, tell us what your perspective. What are the things that you are going to be looking for and needing if this is something that you are planning on doing so that we mm -hmm. can start scoping that out? Um, it could be beneficial to us while also being beneficial to you. And, um, or I meant to say that backwards. <laughs> That like was that very, very American of me to put um, <laughs> that in front. Um, but yeah, it will be an opportunity to to do more research in, in areas that we might not be thinking. Right now, we're thinking about very specific things that affect right. either us directly and yes. or the people that we know that we are mm -hmm. also trying to include in this process. Uh, so yeah, hit us up with your suggestions, your things. You can follow us on the internets, on the social medias, queer, far, pod that's on the tickety talk that's on the instagram that's on the twitters uh we'll probably end up having a pinterest or some shit because eventually we're going to take pictures of pretty pictures. places and stuff like and that food. Lots and of food and food lots of fucking food lots um of food. also dealing with the fact that i have a cilantro allergy and my primary location that i'm thinking about is mexico so and we'll us, see how we get into it <laughs> us looking into also um i'm not bilingual so i am learning another language I mean, so I am I. I mean, I know a Spanish, handful of like I know enough to be dangerous in France. I know yeah. at home in formal Japanese, which is not even close to fluent. I can cuss in Arabic. Spanish is one of is one language, even though I grew up in Southern California and Texas. I know that I, I never know. picked up, but I am learning. Disculpe, senor, senoritas, <laughs> senoras. Um, uh, so we'll be working on the transition of learning languages as well while doing that. So follow us on the tickety talks and, uh, on YouTube, of course, please subscribe. As soon as we hit that hundred subscribers, we'll be able to claim our vanity channel handle. Um, it's called vanity. Yeah. It's called a vanity handle. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we're just youtube.com slash, <laughs> but eventually after a hundred subscribers, we will be queer far pod. Love it. And if you would like to send in a, a suggestion via Please. emails, uh, you can do that also with queer far. And this was before I made everything the same podcast, <laughs> queer far podcast at gmail.com. And that's our general information box that you can drop some info in. Yeah. Sound good. Sounds great. All right. Thank you for so that. So that is it for today. We are vaxxed, waxed, fully packed. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Peace. <laughs>
Queer and Far is a Maine Hustle Media podcast, produced and edited by Charmaine Fury. Co-hosted by Charmaine Fury, a.k.a. The Blaze and Blurred, and Shane Anigans. Music is Big Band Savage Jazz by Pine Groove. If you like what you've heard on Queer and Far, please subscribe, rate, and review on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Main Hustle Media. Turn your side hustle into your main hustle.